Good evening everyone, I hope you're all well. Hope you've had an awesome day so far. Let's buckle on up and head on down that rabbit hole. Oh, she says that she is keeping this little cat here and she's tying it up so that nobody steals it. And I said, well, why would someone steal it? And she says, because they'll eat it. What the hell is going on? Seagulls, cats, dogs getting eaten? What's wrong with just normal food? Where does it end? What's the weirdest thing you've heard after all of this kicked off? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. The thing people say now when it comes to the moon landings is they say, well, I was on the fence about it, but then I saw China's footage and you can see the thing there on the moon and it's like, okay. I saw that Chinese stuff and the Indian stuff and I thought, this is terrible CGI. This is how a lot of these scams are going to start to fall apart though. Who could possibly believe this stuff? And it was the Chinese. They presented some of this footage as real and then you saw community notes on Twitter saying, oh, well, that's not real. It's a computer simulation that they added in for training purposes or something. It's just like, shut up. You got busted. Just admit it. You know, just cop to it. Yeah. So the whole conspiracy about whether we've been to the moon or not is a really interesting one. I feel like we've been there if it did take place. And I think the actual trip to the moon where man walked on it and visited it took place a lot later than the one which was reported on. I think it was all just about trying to get there before Russia did, you know. But again, they're just thoughts. It's not my definitive belief. I'm just sharing some ideas. But let me know your thoughts below. Do you think we've been to the moon ever? Do you think we are living in the end times? Do you think the end is near with the world being so chaotic and dark with the rise of AI and all the wars? I get asked this question so much and the answer is I have no idea, but I'll tell you one of two things. One, tomorrow will worry about itself. There's no reason to live in fear because you won't enjoy today and living in fear is what the enemy wants because with fear comes being controlled. Don't get me wrong, it's still very important to be aware. I mean, that's why I post the content that I do. But if that day ever comes, I'm still not worried because I know where my faith in Jesus lies and I know where I'm going. Do you think we are in the end times? Now, I've said it before, I'm not a Christian. However, if you do look at the state of the world and the book of Revelations, there do seem to be a few boxes being ticked which would indicate that the rapture is going to take place soon boxes which are being ticked are intentionally being ticked you know certain events are being forced to occur around the world to follow a particular narrative and i say this for entertainment purposes what if they're intentionally creating all these problems to tick all the boxes in the book of revelations to stage a false flag religious event for some horrendous agenda again i say this for entertainment purposes but let me know your thoughts on that theory do you genuinely believe that we're in the end times or do you think it's all being staged to feel like we're in the end times for the purpose of staging some global event and it's for some greater agenda let me know your thoughts below be out of your head if you can we intellectualize we want to understand logic reason all of that we're we're way too much in our head just detune and come into your heart and the heart is just an amazing well they tell us it's a pump but it's really not even a pump they're discovering all kinds of new things about the heart that nobody has ever discovered before it isn't anything that we have been told that the heart is the heart is very very powerful and it's it's a unique unique instrument it's way more than a pump we think it's pumping pumps the blood, you know, and keeps us going and so on. It's much more than that. It's actually going into a quantum state, what is going there. Now, to my knowledge, there are neurons in the heart, just like there are in the brain. When you start considering that scientific fact with what that man is saying, it starts to open up some other doors. Now, the first thing that I thought is to do with a particular thing which happens by here in many people during a certain period of time over the last four years, a number of problems with this which followed it. Was that the intention? Is there something about the heart which needs to be 
changed in order to bring in some kind of new agenda is there some kind of goal which cannot be accomplished if this is functioning in a particular way and that needs to be altered it's just my conspiracy mind talking i have no actual evidence to provide you it's just a thought i'm just thinking out loud here let me know your thoughts in the comments below and of course everything i say is for entertainment purposes only i'm not trying to change anyone's mind about anything so you to form your own opinion after you've done some research in the 1970s, excavation went on in the Glen Rose area in Texas, just south of Dallas, in the Paluxy River. They dammed it up, and here's what they found. Not only dinosaur tracks, but, and don't freak out, giant human footprints. Now, take a look at how long that footprint is. That's got to be at least 17, 18 inches. Look how long the strides are. Friends, that's five and a half feet between strides. I'm six foot two. My foot's only 11 and a half inches. And when I take a step forward, I don't do any more than three feet. The person who put that, those tracks down would have been somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to nine feet tall. Yes, Genesis 6 is correct. There were giants in the land in those days and after the worldwide flood. This individual got caught up Bigfoot confirmed. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But nonetheless, maybe evidence of giants. Recently, in one of the older videos, someone had commented saying about the big ape or great ape. I have yet to do some research on this, but I presume that there is some kind of prehistoric primate which would fit the dimensions of this description, you know? Maybe that's what people have always maybe misinterpreted in history as giants. What if it was just some kind of great ape? And because of the way it looked, people presumed that it may have been a giant human. I don't know, I'm just really on a roll here with speaking my mind. <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Why did the astronauts this morning on the historic first commercial spacewalk look like Mr. Roboto in space? That would be SpaceX's new EVA suit that these astronauts are testing out on this mission. They don't move like a winter jacket or anything like that. They have built-in joints that rotate and turn in certain ways. So although they aren't a robot, it sure does feel like one when you're in there when you can only move certain ways. SpaceX plans to take the data collected on this mission on these EVA suits to make a version two, then a version three, and so forth. And it is their hopes to colonize places like the moon and Mars one day with these EVA suits. Pretty wild. I was gonna say it kind of looks like a, it kind of looks like there's some kind of rigid exoskeleton built into that suit and which is why it can only articulate in particular ways or it could just be some kind of animatronic thing and they're just using all of this as marketing but depends on what side of the fence you sit on as far as whether space is real I believe it's real but I don't know what I think about this particular trip in SpaceX let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Whatever you do, do not look into the most disturbing case in history. Back in 2014, two young girls went hiking in Panama. Now they were right out in the wilderness, camping, hiking up these big mountains, and I don't know why you get Panama to do that, but they never returned back. These right here are the last photos that were taken of the pair. As you can see in all of the photos, the pair appeared to be having a nice time, taking some normal photos as you would, but then it cut out. Nothing. Radio silence for, well, an entire week. Seven days later, between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m., take a look. These photos found on the pair's phone, just containing very weird abstract photos, weird stuff. But then it got worse. When authorities were searching through the photos, they found a photo of Lizanne, who was one of the girls. And in this photo, someone was holding her head and there was blood in her hair. Now, what does this mean? We don't really know. Two months later, they discovered something else. They discovered a pelvis and a foot. And after extensive tests, they discovered that the DNA on here matched that of the girls. So they went from having a nice time taking great photos to these extremely disturbing photos that no one knows what they are to being unalived clearly but still the full story remains completely unknown what the hell happened i remember this story breaking on 
international news. I wonder what happened to those two women. I feel like it's probably something really horrific, especially as there were photos of, you know, blood in one of their hair and I don't know. It just doesn't sit right with me, that one. Got to be so careful when you go on these adventure holidays, especially in places like that. Things aren't quite the same in those countries as they are here. It's a good idea to book a local guide with a reputable company in the area so you don't go off the beaten path and end up somewhere where you shouldn't be and then some tragedy befalling you. Y'all, I seriously feel like something really big is coming. I know I show you guys all the stuff that's going on and everything else, but I had this really, really weird feeling. Did y'all see her dress at this VMA or whatever it is? Tell me why she has UFOs on the dress, even in her tour. And I'm sure you're asking yourself, why is this such a big thing? Every major event this year has had aliens, UFOs, or greys. We just had the Olympics and we had all these greys performing behind this mantis and mantis again was known by the ancient tribes to always show up with greys and I mean everywhere and we had the aliens at the Super Bowl. Dorn is my video. It's like every single um, major entertainment source is all showing us UFOs and aliens. Why? What happens when this kind of stuff is usually shown over and over again? Think about it. I wonder, I feel like they're kind of trying to show us, you know, the future. Oh, and I forgot the Miami incident right when the year started. And then right after the eclipse, we had these black shadows flying by the sun. Hmm. Yeah, so sorry, but I don't think this is an accident. Either anything else that we've seen majorly entertainment-wise. Yeah, something's coming. Some kind of staged event, right? It's like everybody can feel it and we just don't have a clue what exactly it's going to be. I still feel like it's more likely there's going to be a false second coming of Christ before there would be a false alien invasion. I don't know why. It just feels like that would be more likely. I feel like that would have a bigger impact on our world than a false flag alien invasion. Like, think how much you could control and influence people if something like that was to happen, as opposed to an alien invasion. Again, just sharing my thoughts, but let me know yours in the comments below. March 1971, deep in the Arctic between Iceland and Jan Mayan Island, the USS Trepang submarine encounters something unexpected. While on a routine mission, strange objects are sighted through the periscope. Unidentified shapes hovering above the icy waters. Photographs taken by the crew reveal bizarre forms. Large cylindrical structures, triangular shapes, and objects appearing to rise from or fall into the ocean. The commanding officer, Admiral Dean Reynolds Sackett, later claimed nothing unusual happened during the mission. Yet the official markings on the photographs, stamped not to be released, raise questions. Was something kept hidden? Some suggest these objects were part of a classified military test, possibly experimental balloons or new technology. However, the scale, behavior, and secrecy surrounding the images have sparked suspicion. Could the Trepang have stumbled upon something meant to remain unseen? And if so, why the silence? While some point to simple test balloons, others wonder if a deeper explanation lies beneath layers of classified information. The Navy's records provide no clear answers. What really happened during that Arctic mission? The truth remains elusive, wrapped in secrecy, like the frozen landscape it unfolded over. I've said it before and I will say it again, we cohabitate on this planet with some other life force, whether it's interdimensional or in this domain, I feel like they are here, they've been here a very very long time and they most likely reside or use the sea as some way of navigating this place or going between different dimensions somehow. The evidence just seems to keep mounting up to suggest that, you know. Let me know what you think though in the comments below. UFO? USO? Or is it all made up? I want to know. Share your thoughts. Our natural disasters and diseases caused by human activity, this commenter seems to think so. It says cancer, diseases, natural disasters are all proven to be caused by humans. 
humans poison our body and our earth. Well, the Bible would disagree with you, and so would science. Let's look at science first. It has been widely reported, and this article from Nature.com says it, doctors have diagnosed advanced cancer in dinosaurs, and not just one dinosaur, but multiple dinosaurs. And since we know that humans don't predate the dinosaurs, it's the other way around. Obviously, humans did not cause the cancer that infected dinosaur bones. So these diseases are a product of nature. But according to the Bible, they're actually a product of God, not mankind. For example, in Exodus 4.11, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or make some blind? Is it not I, the Lord? And of course, this matches what Jesus said when Jesus healed the blind man, and they asked, why is this man blind? Who sinned, him or his parents? Jesus said, neither one of them sinned. God made him that way so that he can display his glory. So God, according to the Bible, is the one who causes human beings to be malformed. But what about natural disasters? Are these a product of humankind? Of course not. We have geological evidence of earthquakes going back 3.3 billion years. And this would make sense because tectonic plate activity is relatively the same throughout history. And of course, we have evidence of volcanic activity going back millions of years. In a published article from nature.com, we can find a list of such eruptions 2.5 billion years ago, some of them. Some of them as early as a couple million years ago. So yeah, natural disasters have been around long before human activity. As an atheist, why is any of this important? Well, this is important to me particularly because this tells me that the God, if he existed of the Bible, created natural disasters out of choice, not out of necessity, and the same for diseases. I know everyone says that this is because mankind sinned and the world was perfect before they sinned. Well, science would say otherwise. It wasn't perfect millions of years ago, but even if we conclude that all of science is wrong and that the Bible is right and it was perfection before the sin, well, all of the imperfection after the fall of Adam and Eve were still a choice that God decided to make. He decided to make natural disasters. He decided to make mankind's bodies so that they would get sick and diseased. These are all consequences that God could have chose not to impose on mankind. He's the one who chose to impose them upon mankind. So you can't blame Satan. You can't blame the serpent. You can't blame mankind. These are decisions that God made and nobody forced his hand and they didn't have to be made. God didn't have to make natural disasters. God didn't have to make diseases. If this God exists, he's just a monster. That guy has some seriously heavy opinions on God. But it does make you think. I've already shared my views on faith in this video so i'm not going to go back into it but i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comment section about god being responsible for natural disasters and diseases and what you think the reasoning for that is remember keep it civil and respectful we're not here to bash on anyone's faith just want to have a discussion did you know that the knights templar were also masters of astrology as a 32nd degree scottish rite mason one of those things that you become is a knights templar which i've also experienced the york rite degrees where you also become a knights templar so if you thought that they were just medieval Knights of Christ, you should stick around till the end of the video. So we're going to discuss how the Knights Templar used astrology in medieval times. The Knights Templar were known for their chivalry, bravery, and piety. They were also shrouded in mystery with rumors of secret rituals, hidden treasures, and esoteric knowledge. In medieval society, the study of astrology was not restricted to a particular social class or profession. Both the wealthy and the common people consulted astrologers to gain insight into their lives. Knights and nobles in particular had a strong interest in astrology, as it was seen as a way to gain an advantage in warfare and politics. It was believed that the celestial bodies had a direct influence on the success or failure of battles and astrologers were consulted to choose auspicious days for military campaigns. Templars believed that the phases of the moon had a profound effect on human behavior and the success of their endeavors. They learned how to use the lunar calendar to plan battles, ceremonies, and other significant events. Templar novices were taught how to interpret horoscopes which were used to gain insight into a person's character, destiny, and potential. They also consulted horoscopes to determine the most favorable times for certain activities. And the Templars were trained to recognize and interpret astrological symbols, which were used to guide their decisions and actions. They believed that each symbol had a unique meaning and could provide insight into the cosmic forces at play. 
because the Knights Templar were very familiar with the Hermetic teachings of as above, so below, or as in heaven, so on earth, which is exactly why they adopted this ancient symbol, which can clearly be found inside of the zodiacal wheel. Whether lunar or solar eclipses, these served as omens for decisions on both sides of the fence whenever there was conflict in military orders. In fact, in 585 BC, there was the Battle of the Eclipse. The battle was between the Medes and the Lydians, and the battle came to an abrupt end due to a solar eclipse. This unexpected celestial event was interpreted as an omen, prompting both sides to negotiate peace after five years of conflict. This historical battle is notable for being one of the earliest recorded instances where an astronomical event directly influenced the outcome of a military engagement. We now have two more eclipses that are coming up just in a few days and then another one coming up in early October, starting with a lunar eclipse and then a solar eclipse. And just like the eclipse that happened earlier this year, everything that me and my buddy Matt from Team Psychosmos predicted actually came to pass. We actually hosted a workshop back then that had about 50 people attend. What we provided for those who attended was useful, practical information. And they paid for a three-hour lecture, and it actually ended up being a little bit over four hours. We actually decided to break up this one into two separate sections for two hours each. But purchasing this workshop gets you access to the original workshop. Altogether, getting eight hours of access to very useful and practical information. First session will be September 17th, and we'll be going over Lunar Eclipse. And the second session is going to be October 1st, which is going to be about solar eclipse. Given the rise of political tension and the tension that's going on over in the Middle East and also Russia and Ukraine, this is vital information that you can use practically. However, with the lunar eclipse being inside of Pisces, it might be a different result than you're expecting. And the only reason we don't do these workshops here on TikTok is because obviously it takes hours to explain the material, and we simply can't fit it inside of one video. My buddy Matt is an absolute genius when it comes to astrology. And I'm an experienced Knights Templar in both the Scottish Rite and the York Rite. And together, we're basically Power Rangers when it comes to astrology. So if you're interested, go click the link in my bio or inside of Matt's bio. My name is Gnostic Pope and I'm a proud esoteric Freemason. It's me. I've always found masonry to be extremely fascinating, but I am definitely more interested in the esoteric knowledge aspect of it rather than all the charitable events and everything else. Not that I think there's anything wrong with that. It's good to contribute back to society and help build it up, especially for those which are less privileged. However, the symbolism, the hermetics, the esoteric knowledge, I want to know more about this stuff. I find it so, so fascinating. There's got to be a reason why that information is there and existed and has been used for ceremonies for hundreds and hundreds of years. We have specific forums set up within our discord community for all of this kind of stuff and we're really looking for people to come join us so we can open up dialogues about this information because some of it could be very valuable and we, we don't even realize it or you know, it may just be fantasy stories which have gotten out of hand from a medieval era who knows that's the point of having the conversations to try and get clarity on these things but let me know your thoughts in the comments below he was working in the store alone that night when this happens Around the start of September of 2024, a store manager was unpacking some items from a box alone in the store during the late hours of the night, when something terrifying startled him. Not sure what it was, he rushes over to check the security camera's footage. What he saw sent chills down his spine, so he immediately records a video to show what was captured, and that's when something even more terrifying happens that has left him shaken up. Putting things away from the box. All right, now watch. I want you guys to focus on this area right here. Okay? Hold on, let me uh, speed this up a bit. All right, watch. Look. Boom, see that? I'll get back here for you guys to give you a better view. Look at that. And I'm just like tripping, like what just happened? At first I I didn't know what the hell it was, but went to see that there's a box on the ground. I'm like, okay, weird. And now I'm going to look, you know, to see what's going on. It fell, okay, but pay attention to this area right here. The 
Is that you? Look, look, I'm here by myself. Nobody's here. It's just me. See that? Come out. I'm not afraid of you. Is that you? I threw down the box earlier? Come on out. You don't scare me. Come on out, pussy. See that? You see that? Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah, nah, nah. One of the security cameras monitoring an entrance captures something suddenly pulling a bit of his hair out of nowhere. The way his hair is tugged even though he is alone really got to him. After seeing the undeniable footage caught by the store CCTV, he has come to the conclusion that something indeed haunts his store. But I'll let you be the judge. I can't really be sure what I think on that one. Always a skeptic when it comes to this kind of stuff. The, the one thing I struggle with is the way that people are videoing these things. And if they are truly experiencing fear, I feel like they wouldn't be able to even think about trying to capture it on video. You know, I can't, I just can't see it being the case that someone will be able to keep their brain focused on trying to capture footage if they are experiencing the fight or flight response, you know? But I'm just, again, thinking out loud. Share your thoughts on it in the comments below. But that just about does it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the clips. If you did, please drop a like on the video and subscribe for future content. I post every single day at 8 p.m. UK time. And if you haven't already done so, please join our Discord community, the link for which you can find in the video description. But for now, stay well. Stay safe and stay curious. Until next time.